put your hands together right now because God and God alone is worthy of our praise. Amen. Here we go. Every praise. Every word of worship. Good morning, K-5 friends. Today we're going to read our Bible from 
Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 4. So if you have your Bibles next to you, I want you guys to open your Bible to Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 4. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, not God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled made in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Amen. The Bible reminds us over and over again that people are not able to perfectly obey God and remain faithful to Him. But God remained very faithful. I mean, today is the last day to actually go over the Old Testament, the whole Old Testament. And we both of us have witnessed that God's been so faithful to the Israelites and to us. And He kept His promise and sent Jesus to obey the law perfectly for us. We cannot earn salvation, but if we believe in Jesus Christ and all He had done for us, we can be saved from our sins. Today's Bible story teaches us that Jesus not only saves us from the death and sin, but brings, but also saves us to live rightly for God now. Over and over in the past, in the Old Testament, we have all witnessed that God's people promised to be faithful. And God's people uh, said they're going to be obedient, that they will follow God. However, they didn't follow him. God gave his law to show what he requires. He gave them the Ten Commandments and all the other laws uh, to the Israelites. But again and again, the people failed to obey them perfectly, and they rebelled and turned against God. Uh, there are some of the things that we know over the years in the history of Israel, the Israelite history. They did not obey God perfectly. They would always do the idol worshiping. And even when they wanted to obey God, they could, you know, they could never be good enough, no matter how hard they tried. Um, their sin made them guilty before God, and they needed help, a lot of help, and they needed a savior. Um, at just the right time, God kept the promise to send a savior, which was Jesus Christ. And he came to rescue the sinners like you and me. Sin is powerful, but Jesus is more powerful. A believer named Paul, he wrote about sin in a letter to Christians in Rome. So Paul was a this smart, smart guy, and he studied really hard, and he was like an expert of God's word. But one day on the road to Damascus, he met Jesus, and that's when he became a different person. And this Paul, his name is Paul or Apostle Paul, uh, said that Jesus was a savior the people had been waiting for. And this is what Paul said. Now, there is no condemnation. Condemnation means no judgment, no punishment for those who have been saved by faith in Jesus. Why? Because the new law, which is the law of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, not the Ten Commandments or the laws of the Moses, but this new covenant and the new law of the Holy Spirit has set you free from the old law. The old law was written down and it helped you understand that you are a sinner. The old law brought sin and death, and God sent Jesus to defeat sin and death and everything, right? So that we could be made righteous by faith in Him and live through the Spirit. And God has put the new law inside of our hearts. So now inside of our hearts, there is a new law, not the old law, not the uh, the past laws, but we have this new law that was written in our heart through the Spirit of God. The new law brings life and peace. So Paul talked about two ways of living, living by doing what you want to live in a sinful way, or you live by doing what God wants through the Spirit of God. And since Jesus frees us from the power of sin, we can say no to sin. 
Even though sin is everywhere, I mean, even when you're watching the news, you see that people are still sinning. And in our lives too, right? That we sin over and over and over again. But like, what does Paul mean by we are set free from our sin? It's because Jesus died for our sin and we are no longer chained to our sin. So therefore we have this freedom to say, no to sin. And God gives us his spirit and power to live in a way that honors God. Paul wanted to be very clear. Being not guilty before God doesn't mean we should keep on sinning. So now we don't have any sin because of Jesus Christ, but that doesn't mean you can just go out and sin and live whatever you want. No, that doesn't mean that's how we are living in guilt. It means God's spirit is inside of us and it gives us power to turn away from our sin and obey God. When we let the spirit to lead us, we prove to be children of God. And faith is very important in this process. God doesn't just change something in, inside of us. He changes us and God gives us a new heart new desires, and a new way of thinking. And this is a miraculous gift from God. We will struggle with sin. Of course, we will. But now, what is most true about us is not that we are sinners, but that we belong to Jesus Christ. And God sent Jesus to take a punishment for our sin. Even though we deserve to be up on the cross, Jesus came and he said, I will take up your spot. So he died for us. But the powerful part of Jesus Christ is, unlike any other humans, he resurrected from death and he conquered sin and death. And because of Jesus Christ, you and I have forgiveness that God sees us and he no longer sees this sinful heart, but he sees this new heart that is inside of us. And he gave us the eternal life through Jesus Christ. And through God's spirit, we have this power to turn away from sin and live to bring glory to God. So boys and girls, the good news is we are done with the Old Testament. And finally, starting from next week, we're going to talk about Jesus Christ and the Gospels. And we're very excited. Even though the Old Testament was filled with some sinful stories, people promise to be faithful to God, but they turn away from God again and they sin again. They worship the idols over and over and over again, which led them to be an exile, right? However, what we can find out in the Old Testament is this that God is faithful, that God is always with us, that he was always with his people and he will always be with us. And as we're entering into this New Testament, I hope you guys remember that Jesus came for a reason. He didn't just come randomly, but he came to save us from our sin. Our sin isn't just not listening to our parents, but our deeper sin is self righteousness, thinking that I am okay, thinking that I am fine, but we're not okay. We're still really sick, but Jesus came to save us from that sin. So boys and girls, I want you guys to think about today's rapping story from Apostle Paul's uh, letter to Rome. And I want you guys to think about this one verse that he wrote. Therefore, we're, we don't have God's condemnation. No punishment from God, no judgment from God. I mean, he will judge at the end of the, at the end of the day, but he will take us to his place and we will have eternal life with him. So let's talk about, let's think about that part. And I want you guys to close your eyes and fold our hands and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we are very thankful that we're finally over uh, with the Old Testament. It was a long journey to go over every story or most of the stories in the Old Testament. From the moment you created the earth and the universe uh, till that they came back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, to rebuild the walls and rebuild their hearts once again. However, we have learned again that they have sinned, that they built their self-righteousness, 
that they could not saved from the laws of God. But the only way to be saved was through Jesus Christ. And you were planning to sending your only son, <clears throat> your only son to earth to save us from our sin. So Father, we pray that you will continuously remind us of Jesus Christ and the promise that he brought it to us. Therefore, there's no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus Christ. So thank you, Father, for continuously loving us, taking care of us, and we love you so much, Jesus, and we pray everything in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.